Yikes! Hold on. Oh, that's a bit of unpleasantness. We uh, appear to have a sudden loss of pressure in the front. Well, nothing to do but uh, take this front wheel off and and have a closer look. When planning uh, on the way to work in the city or an errand or uh, what have you, uh, it is always my preference to uh, have a an issue or a problem adjacent to a coffee shop. So uh, I find that uh, quite, quite pleasant. So let's have a seat and uh, see, uh, see what we can find on our tire. This one does not take a whole lot of searching. We have a potentially serious problem here. Oh, well, it is a serious problem. A nice gash. So that's probably our, our problem. We're gonna continue to look at everything else around but uh, most certainly that one is uh, is going to be a problem anytime we see this we might suspect oh it could be steel unlikely nail uh, but the number one culprit of course we all know uh, glass broken glass possibly the cause well to deal with the uh, problem and to get back on on the road we're going to need a few things a uh, pump your pump, a pocket pump, or a frame pump, or an air cartridge. We'll be needing that. And uh, what do I have back here? Headset spacer. I don't know why. This one is not even a threadless fork, but patch kit. Uh, alcohol swab's nice. Some tire levers built into our, uh, our tool. That'll be a, uh, a start. So let's uh, continue on with our repair. Take out the tire levers you have. Uh, the MTB7 is one tool that has them built into the uh, body of the tool. Go to engage part of the bead. I'm going to come over and engage the second section a little bit further over. This one's fairly loose so it comes all the way off. With the tire off, off of our rim, we're going to pull out the inner tube and sure enough with some daylight peeking through that hole in our tire uh, not a good situation if we threw a, a tube or repaired or a new tube in that it's going to blow right through um, in no time at all very dangerous situation to ride with that and right here we're probably going to have a good size hole and sure enough we do so we'll have to uh, Remove, remove uh, the inner tube. Here, uh, we are going to try and do a temporary uh, repair, kind of a tourniquet repair, if you will, to uh, to get us back, and then replace this tire as soon as possible. And it's called a, a boot booting. We're going to put a a piece on the inside here that uh, protects the inner tube from poking out. So let's let's review uh, some of the um, things we may we may hear in the uh, the, the mythology of, of cycling. Uh, currency. We often hear people say, "Oh, we can use a, a dollar bill." Uh, many things could be stuffed in, but are these actually strong? Well, let's let's start with the British British pound. This is the the Bank of England, a uh, very noble uh, note. Let's see how strong. A little tensile tensile test here. Let's see. Well, I think that was pretty easy. I think that tear is pretty easy. So uh, not, not a lot of strength there. We'll put that to the side. The Euro. Oh, the Arc, the finish of the, the tour we have right right here. That's, that's nice. So let's, uh, oh, the Peninsula, Iberian Peninsula. Let's test the strength of the Euro here. A 10 Euro note, a, a, decent, uh, a decent quantity. It appears to be but paper. This is this is paper. Well, let's keep going. We have, of course, here uh, George George Washington Federal Reserve note here. Uh, it's backed by the full strength and uh, of the U.S. U.S. government. Let's try it. Must must be really strong too. 
no, this, this appears to be paper as, as well. So you will hear people say, oh, we can, we can boot with this. Uh, that's true, but a piece of paper would be uh, as strong. Uh, one thing that if you do have, you can, you can, uh, can use if you happen to have it. Uh, test your, your fishing license and your hunting license. You'll often, often find those are very strong material. What we're going to use is uh, something I like to carry, the, uh, the tire boot. This is very strong. It's got some paper backing that we, we peel off, but this is the material here. I cannot rip that. That's very strong. So, superior. The TB2 superior to uh, the currency. So let's, let's run with it. You may need on very skinny tires sometimes to, to trim down the width. Of course, some, some multi-tools do come with a knife. That's, that's handy. So to install the TB, we need to put it on the inside. And again, there's our rip. Uh, so we're going to lay it in like so to fully cover and give that to some support. Uh, and again, no matter how good we are with the tire boot, we are not gonna duplicate the strength of the cords and the casing. So this again is a temporary repair. We have our adhesive, very stout adhesive. And we're gonna bias, in my case, toward, toward the side of that cut but we do not want to extend the boot into the bead area. There we are. We don't want the boot wrapping around, uh, preventing full, full seating. So that's in there. Kind of press that up against there. Tube's going to go inside and in here. It's going to prevent for a temporary while, temporary bit of time. Uh, we're going to get back home. After affecting our uh, tire boot, we need to get our inner tube uh, running again. Again, best is a new inner tube, but I do not have one, so we'll have to make do. We want to pump it up to find the hole, but this is a great example. This tube is not going to pump up. That hole is large, so that, that technique is not quite so useful. Uh, so we have to look alongside. This is when we should have uh, paid attention pulling it out. In a big hole like that, if we give it kind of a, a stretch, we hope that it's going to it's going to show up. Whoop! Right there. There we are. Nice, nice big hole. So we're going to try and get a patch over that. And uh, what we're going to do today is use. A vulcanizing kit, the, the VP1. It, uh, it's a vulcanizing glue, chemically vulcanizes. It is not a heat uh, process. Uh, we're going to clean the area, uh, apply the glue, allow it to dry, and then uh, install, our, install our patch. Around the hole is where we want to take some of our abrasive paper here and clean. That's really the primary purpose of this paper is to, to get it clean. Well, we're cleaning by uh, scraping. And we want to clean an area larger than we think our patch will go. So we've, we've selected one of the round patches. That should surely be adequate for this, this rip here. Okay, we want to again clean an area a bit larger than we're going to be working because we don't want to have to do this again. So let's go a bit wider. Okay. There's our patch. We're clean beyond there. And again, a nice thing to carry with you. Get to a uh, pharmacist. These simple alcohol swabs are, are nice. It adds a nice clean surface, alcohol. For our uh, rotor disc brake friends, it also can be an emergency clean on the, on the rotor. Next uh, step for us is to uh, puncture our, uh, our new tube of glue. The cap has a uh, poker here. So we're just going to give that a little jab. Mm -hmm. There we are. 
And we're going to spread the adhesive in an area wider than we need and also thin. You can see it, it goes on a bit gloppy here. So like any adhesive work, uh, for that matter, painting or tubular tire installation, thin and even. So here you can use the, the patch, the back of the patch, to, uh, to spread that. I think I need a little more on, on this side here. And this adhesive is going to react with the back of the patch and create our, our bonding process. Maybe a little more over here. A little more. Even. Nice and even and bigger than the patch. Very important process next. Let's snug that cap back on. Let's put that cap. There we go. Snug. Back in our kit. Now, we need to let this dry. And of course, that is why we have our coffee. So we'll give that just a minute to, to dry. We've let a couple of uh, minutes uh, expire. We never want to be touching, especially with greasy fingers and hands, right where we're bonding. If you want to test, you can test uh, to the side, but a little tacky is, is, is quite all right. We're going to peel off our, our patch from the foil. There we are. Here again, we're going to try not to touch right where we're adhering. We're going to center it up. Think about that. The first time it's hard to pick up and put down again. We're going to lay it down and then push the edges. Very, very nice. Push the edges firmly. We're going to make sure that it's the edges that are, are quite secure. Oh, very, very good. And we want to look around. If you see a big flap lifting up, uh, you probably did not get quite enough glue there. Um, possibly it was gloppy, but this is a nice taper. We can see that we're, we're laid down flat. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is uh, purposely not do something. This plastic, we're simply going to leave on. The plastic acts as a, uh, a slide, a protector. Uh, we don't want the rubber to be peeling up inside the, 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 um, the tire. Rubber on rubber is quite a bit of friction, so this acts as a, as a slider. So we're, we're quite happy just to leave that right in place. After some inflation, we want to double check our tire. Uh, we'll take the pump off. Again, this is a compromised casing. Uh, we want to check that there's not a large lump. This one turned out quite nice. You can see where the cut is. It's opened up slightly. That's going to hold for us. This is not up to 80. It's probably 70, 60, 70. Definitely enough to get us home. So we don't want maximum pressure here. Uh, just enough to get us back. Then we need to replace this tire. So, poppy seed cake's nearly finished. We uh, leave no trace, just like in the wilderness. Let's put our uh, valve cap back on. Finish up, pack up, and uh, hit the road.